Hello, I'm Chris Callahan, also known as Mr. C, and today we're going to talk about pins. So much of chess is about making sure your pieces have lots of space to move. And at the same time, you want to make sure that your opponent's pieces don't have a lot of space to move. And no piece has less spaces to move to than a piece that is pinned. So what's a pin? Well, in this position, for example, let's say I played the move bishop to b5. You may notice right away that I am attacking the knight, but there's an extra twist in that the knight can't move. It's actually stuck to this square right here. And the reason it can't move is because behind the knight is a king. This is the basic construction of a pin. You're attacking one piece, and then behind it is another piece that you can't afford to lose. How would this be changed if instead of having the king behind the knight, we had a queen behind the knight? Well, the difference here is that the knight is allowed to move. You, you can move the knight. It's just not a very good idea because you lose your queen. These are the two types of pins. We call one an absolute pin and the other a relative pin. Basically, is an, an absolute pin is a one involving the king where the piece simply can't move. It's against the rules to move. While a relative pin is just one where it's a bad idea to move, but you're still allowed to if you want to for some reason. Don't worry too much about remembering these names. The important thing is to remember what a pin looks like and the basic idea of having a piece that you're attacking and another piece that's more important behind it. So what do we do when we have a pin? Well, the first way that pins are useful is in just taking the piece that you are pinning. For example, in this position, white would love to play the move bishop to d5, pinning the queen to the king. Now, in this case, you're just going to eventually take the queen because queens are a lot better than bishops, so trading it for the bishop is great. But don't get into the habit of just taking the piece every time you have a pin, because that can be a big mistake. In this position, we have a, another pin on the knight by the bishop. And if you were to take this knight, I think it would be a huge mistake. And to understand why, look at the two pieces as they are right now. Which of these two pieces is happier? Well, clearly the bishop. The bishop can move around, it can go to different squares, it can do whatever it wants. Can the knight do whatever it wants? No, it's stuck right there. It can't move anywhere because it's pinned to the king. This is very uncomfortable for black. Whoever's playing black would definitely want their knight to be able to move away if they could. And when you take it, black just takes back. That's an even trade. And what used to be a pin is now nothing. What a waste. In a position where you don't have to give away the pin, you should just hold on to it because why not? And if you can, you should begin a strategy of attacking the pinned piece again and again and again. Let me show you what that looks like. White is going to set up a pin with bishop b5. The knight on c6 cannot move, and I'm threatening to simply take that knight for free. Uh, black will try to defend the knight. Maybe they will play queen to d6, defending the knight. Now I do not take because that would just be a trade. So what, I have a valuable thing, I have a pin. And if I take, I'm giving it away. Instead, I wanna attack that piece again. Let's say I play knight to e5, attacking the knight again. Now I'm attacking the knight twice. It's only defended once. Black needs to defend it again. Maybe they will play knight to e7. Again, I still don't take the knight. We wanna keep the pin. I will play instead queen to a4. Look at all these pieces that are attacking the knight. I know the queen isn't actually aiming at the knight right now, but I can aim at it whenever I want by taking the knight, and then whatever piece takes back, I'll immediately be aiming at the knight again. So we say that the queen is kind of helping out aiming at the knight. So now I have one, two, three white pieces attacking this knight and only two black pieces defending it. There's actually no way to get another black piece defending it, and we're just gonna win this knight. Now, it's important to understand why all this works. You see, the plan of just attacking a piece again and again and again doesn't always work. It only works on pin pieces. If you just picked any old piece and attacked it a thousand times, 
it would just move and then you'd be attacking an empty square a thousand times. But a pin piece can't move. So if you attack it a thousand times, the defender's only option is to defend it a thousand times or lose it. Another way that you can take advantage of pinned pieces is that a piece that is pinned is not actually doing some job that it seems to be doing. Let me give you an example. Uh, this position is a fairly well-known opening trap. White has just played a3, having a poke at this bishop, and black surprisingly will not save their bishop. Instead, they play knight takes e5. And if white isn't careful and takes that bishop, they will get a very rude surprise with knight to d3. Now, the white players that have fallen for this trap can be forgiven for thinking that they can take this knight with the pawn because, well, pawns do take going diagonal. Unfortunately, this pawn on e2 cannot take anything because it is pinned. And that leads to a very surprising checkmate. Let's practice a bit. You are playing white. I won't give any hints or anything. Just leave you on your own. Uh, what would you play? I'll give you a second to think. Pause if you like. Well, let's see. What are our options here? You could take the black queen, but that's just a queen trade. That's nothing special. A far better move would be rook to a4. Now, notice that the black queen cannot take the white queen for free because it is pinned. And you will be taking this uh, black queen probably on the next move and uh, be up a queen for a rook. A nice place to be. Here's another one. What do you think we should do here? I'll give you a moment to think. Pause your videos if you like. Well, hopefully you noticed that there is a pin here. The bishop pins the knight to the queen. Taking the knight would not be very good because the queen just takes back. That's a trade. A much better move is knight to d5. Attacking the pinned knight again, which of course cannot run away, and uh, attacking the queen at the same time. Probably black will save their queen somewhere, and then we will win that knight. Last one, you're playing white. What would you do here? I'll give you a moment to think. Pause your videos if you like. Well, hopefully you notice that your queen is in danger and the natural thing to do might be to just move your queen away. Fortunately, white has a way to take advantage of a pin. White can play knight takes g6. And if the black pawn takes back, it reveals the pin that was there all along as we take the rook. The pawn right here is pinned against the rook. All right, I think that's about enough. Uh, I appreciate everyone watching. Hopefully you learned something about pins. Have a good one. Bye-bye.